Muy bien, gracias por venir. I will translate after you yeah, say. Sure. So make it as long as you want. Okay. <laughs> um, you just arrived from Germany. Yep. I just uh, from or, but you are living in Portugal. Yes, I moved to Portugal uh, one year and seven months ago. Bien, le pregunté, acaba de llegar de Alemania, pero se mudó a Portugal hace un año y siete meses. And how's the experience of living in a different country, different language, different <laughs> culture, different everything? Yeah, crazy, because yeah, it's like completely different to Germany, and um, Germany is everything so strict. And Portugal is a little bit like Buenos Aires or Argentina, tranquilo. <laughs> and a f little bit freakier so and mm, and obviously nice weather and you have the ocean there so it's a completely different way of living than i was living the last 14 years in berlin estuvo bueno la diferencia es es una diferente cultura una de, un lugar diferente alemania es como muy rígido y portugal es como más parecido a la argentina más tranquilo eh, vive en la playa Así que se fue acostumbrando. And now you are living like in a, in a beach city. It, it's like living on vacations. Yeah, exactly. So um, we've been living one year directly in the city center of Lisbon, but now I'm living close to the ocean. And with it's really super inspiring when you're going like from the tour all over the world, when you're coming like home and you have like those four days with no traffic, Just the ocean, a little bit surfing, music, sunshine, and it gives you so much energy back compared like to living in a big city where you have always the pressure, the rush, and a lot of competition. So it gives me a lot of creativity, and I make a lot of music there. So because there's nothing to do for me besides having a good time with my friends, going surfing or making music. This is like super, super creative. La diferencia es, eh, le dije, es como vivir de vacaciones. Vivió un año primero en Lisboa, la capital de Portugal, y ahora está viviendo en la playa. Y llegar de gira y estar cuatro o cinco días en un lugar que es súper relajado, que no hay tráfico, es todo música, verse con amigos, sol. Eh, y es un lugar que le inspiró mucho a la creatividad. Eh, so, eh, Regarding the place you live and creativity, how many tracks did, uh, do you make for the per day? <laughs> Not per day, maybe one, but um, <laughs> since we moved there, it's like already 60 new tracks, so quite a lot. <laughs> And in Lisbon was not so much. <laughs> And you still haven't known the studio yet. <laughs> the studio is coming pretty soon, yeah. Eh, le pregunté cuál es la diferencia. Él dijo que la ciudad es creatividad. Eh, es como que el contexto en el que uno vive inspira a, a dedicarle tiempo a otras cosas, a hacer música. Y le dije, ¿cuántos tracks hiciste? Haces por día. Y dijo, bueno, por día uno, que hizo ya 60 tracks y, y todavía no tiene el estudio montado. O sea, termina los tracks. A, 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 se lo voy a preguntar. And so you make the, the, the creativity part in, at home and then you go to a different studio and you finish it. Exactly. This is what I'm doing right now. So uh, because I don't have uh, a lot of equipment there right now and I just make like the ideas on the laptop and I have a little, the two little drum machines and not, not a big studio, but even the less studio setup m gives you a little bit more creativity because you have to use less equipment to get to a good result and I think even nowadays you can make like a super good track with just a laptop because you don't have to have a lot of output machines or synthesizers it for me it's like the and even maybe in future you can make it maybe on an iPad or on an iPhone or on an whatever phone but if the result is great I'm not judging it so as long as people are dancing to it in the club you make everything right. This is my opinion. Some people say it's completely different, but as a DJ and seeing so many clubs around the world, the really most important thing is that the people are dancing and obviously the quality of the tune needs to be perfect, but um, nowadays it's way easier to make music than 10 or 15 years ago. Definitely. <laughs> um, 
Bueno, le, le pregunté y me dijo que hace la creatividad en su casa con computadoras y después lo termina en otro lado, que tiene dos drum machines y que a veces con menos equipo hace más música eh, y que el, el, si la gente baila ya, está, ya se cumple con el objetivo. Entonces él hace música, la prueba en los clubs y si la gente baila está bien, que es el fin que tiene que ser música de calidad y que cumpla con, con el objetivo de hacer bailar. Less is more, right? Having less equipment or less resources sometimes is more creativity. Sometimes it's more creativity. Obviously, it really depends on the style you want to produce. If you want to produce minimal, micro, modular house, I guess it's quite difficult to make it just with the laptop because um, the, the, mo the really good ideas come by trial and error. When you have a modular system and you have an analog sequencer, you just two one, two cables and it completely different sound comes up which can lead to a new track so I think this is a different approach but it really depends on what kind of genre of music you're making definitely le dije bueno menos es más y me dice que sí depende de la música que quieras hacer como que si quieres hacer minimal modular todo hecho con eh, sintetizadores y enchufadas dos cables eh, siempre es como que depende de, de el tipo de música and Uh, how is uh, even if you are in Berlin or in a big studio or, or on an airplane, how's your workflow to create? Do, do you have like a, a specific way you start and finish your music, or it always change? It um, nowadays it always changes. Back then it was always starting with the drums, but I'm not doing this anymore. I'm now I start with the essence of the track like the sample or the melody or the chord or the bass line and then I built the beats and the groove around it so the, the other way around sí, sí. Está funcionando bien. Eh, he told me that eh, me dijo que me dijo que antes tenía como siempre el mismo flujo le pregunté cómo era su flujo creativo y me dijo que antes tenía siempre el mismo flujo empezaba por la batería y después continuaba pero que ahora lo fue cambiando y empieza quizás por un sample, por el chord eh, o por el bass line, o la línea de bajo, y después construye todo alrededor de eso. Uh, yeah, the, a couple of months ago, uh, Rafa Eiffel came here, you know, and uh, he told us exactly the same as you mentioned, and he said, now I only listen to vocals. And uh, my job is to listen to vocals, and when I find a vocal that I think that will work for a track, I will make the drop. Then after the drop, I will make that groove because the groove is easy to me and to pick the correct vocal and to make the great explosion for his music that is like explosive. Uh, it, that's his objective, you know? And here we teach also to start the music from a different point, you know, so mm -hmm. sometimes they start from the chord, sometimes from the bass line. Le conté que hace poco Rafa FL vino acá y contó que él solo escuchaba vocales porque y construía como el drop y la, el explote y después construía el groove alrededor porque el groove estaba seguro que le iba a salir pero que el correcto vocal no era tan, tan sencillo de encontrar. And uh, besides a music production, Uh, what is your role in Avotre nowadays? Do you still running in the operative uh, way? Yes, of course. This is like we have um, one partner. Uh, which his name is Hannes. He's doing like all the business-related stuff, like the contracts and all the boring part. <laughs> 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 and yeah, me is like listening to music every day and a lot of demos, like at least 10, 20 a day. So and figuring out the right and the creative creative part of it. So this is what I really like and this is the reason why why this label is alive, to give something back and always I want to sign new talents and we have like obviously some bigger artists all the time and then in between like various artist EPs and also maybe unknown uh, artists who have maybe the first or second or, or yeah, like maybe the third release 
to give like a little bit back to the community because I don't want to have like always large DJ names just to sell a lot of records. For me, it's like to keep the balance. Obviously, you have to have some bigger names to to get uh, a little bit money to the label to uh, finance some underground and other artists which are not uh, so famous yet. Super nice to hear that. Eh, él se dedica a la parte del de A&R, de recibir, escuchar los demos. Hannah sí hace la parte de los contratos y la parte aburrida. Y él escucha 10 o 20 tracks por día. Y como que su sentimiento es el de devolverle algo a la comunidad. Eh, edita DJs y productores grandes. Y en el medio va metiendo DJs que quizás tienen uno o ningún track eh, editado. Y es como que trata de hacer un balance entre eso. Eh, edita artistas grandes para hacer guita y después artistas eh, menos conocidos para como mantenerse en el underground. And uh, in the middle, how, how someone from here can give you music if they think Avotra is the correct label for them? Always give me a USB stick because it's, if you see me live somewhere, come to me, give me a stick. Um, otherwise, try to send as much as possible on every other channel and social media. <laughs> Because there's so many, sometimes I don't respond, but if I have a good day, I respond to all of them. <laughs> <laughs> eh, la me le pregunté, como hay muchos productores acá y viéndolos en el streaming, ¿cuál es la mejor forma para hacerle llegar a él música? Y me dijo, traten de darme siempre un pendrive cuando toco en vivo. Esa es la mejor forma porque recibe mucho a través de todas las redes sociales. Dice que a veces tiene un buen día y contesta todo, pero que es difícil. Yeah, that now uh, uh, with the time it's always more and more people making music and sometimes it, it bombs from Instagram, Facebook, mail, demo, mail, and blah. And I know, it's difficult. And... Uh, Are you are you receiving good tracks? Are you pleased with what you get? Obviously, there's some really surprising stuff in it, and sometimes oh, always average and good, or sometimes also really bad music. When I think, why are you sending this? It's just because of what reason. Um, but I'm surprised how much great music is out there, and quality, and young newcomer producers, and This is like really nice to see that there's so much great music coming. Amazing, yeah, I feel the same. Dice que, que se sorprende y que le está llegando música muy buena, que hay muchos que dice ¿por qué me estás mandando esto a mí? Pero que, que sí, que normalmente recibe música muy muy buena. And uh, in, y, in your taste brain, What is what you look for when you listen to a track? I, I can tell if I listen to you playing, I can think about that. But if you have to give an advice to a producer, a young producer that maybe is not perceptive, wh what do you look for? What is the, 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 I don't know the word in English, the distinguished thing, you know? First of all, I'm looking for that he has already maybe found his sound. It's so difficult to find a sound as a producer or as an artist too, because you sometimes you don't want to define on one particular thing. But if you're young and you already have like 10 super quality tunes, which blow my mind and I can play all of them in a set every night. So this is really, really great to look forward. And then maybe be a little dip bit different than like the Beatport top 10. <laughs> <laughs> Ya, yeah, definitely. Eh, le pregunté cuál era la característica que él busca cuando escucha música, más allá que uno la puede percibir escuchando un set y viendo la música que elige en el sello. I have to add something, yeah. Okay, I, I was dale. Maybe it's like this one plug-in, one instrument, one unique thing what you have for yourself and you use it in every track which makes your track special because now with the accessibility of having so much plugins or instruments or whatever you want. Find one thing which only sticks to you. And I think 
and continue with it. Like in even if you do it like maybe once for a high head or whatever, but go for it till the re end of your career. <laughs> Lo último que agregó y después voy a lo que dijo antes es encontrar un elemento que te distinga, que puede ser un sintetizador, un elemento percusivo, lo que sea, que haga que eso sea distintivo tuyo. Y una vez que lo encontrás, hace que eso permanezca y perdure por el resto de tu carrera. Eh, y en la, antes de agregar eso, eh, valora recibir... Eh, música de un productor que diga, bueno, me mandó 10 tracks y estos 10 tracks yo los puedo tocar, eh, los pongo en todos los sets y que sea algo que sea distinto al top 10 de Beatport. Y luego agregó el, el comentario de elemento distintivo. Uh, what, what, which is your distinguished element in your productions? Do, do you recognize that? Do you have one? I use a lot the 909. Um, well, yeah, definitely. Ah, okay. So, so uh, I use it a lot, but it's not. Uh, it is actually in every record because even if it's just in Hyatt or whatever clap, but I think it's in every record. In it's detuned or edited, but this is definitely in everyone. And maybe mm, I would say sometimes it's the groove what I'm what I like in my productions. Yeah, well, yeah. definitely li listening to it, de definitely that distinguishes it. And the 909 thing uh, also. Yeah. Eh, le pregunté cuál era su elemento distintivo y me dijo que definitivamente la 909 de Roland, que puede estar picheada para un lado, picheada para el otro, pero que siempre está. Y después el group que, que logra. And do you still sampling? Yes, but not as much anymore because I got a big lawsuit and this made me stop sampling. <laughs> so now I play everything by myself or get uh, other artists like playing a similar kind of vibe of the sample, uh, but I'm not stealing the music from anybody else anymore. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Le pregunté si seguía sampleando y me dijo que no porque tuvo un problema legal importante, entonces ahora no se amplía más, que sí puede llegar a tocar algo parecido o estar en la búsqueda, pero después de ese problema legal no roba samples anymore. I, with the time, and I hear this a lot here, uh, it's making, it's getting like difficult, more difficult to, to sample things because with uh, like Shazam stuff, Uh, a couple of students of ours had problems in the distributors before getting to Spotify. Mm. Uh, they they ask what is this and they reject the track. You know? Yeah, exactly. Weird. And and uh, philosophically, y you know, what do you think about this? Because it's mm. a sample. <laughs> yes, I. I see it like a little bit similar, but I see it also on the other side. Obviously, if you take from a huge, whatever, pop artist, the vocal, you have to clear it. It's like it, you can't go to a supermarket, take the bread and say it's yours or make, make the half of the bread and take it with you and make a sandwich out of it and sell it on the street because it's the same thing. You have to make the r clear the rights, so buy the bread, make the sandwich afterwards, but not take the half of the bread out of the shop and make a sandwich. So I think it's the same with the samples. It's great to sample, but when you release the music, the sample needs to be cleared if you want to release it on a commercial way, which means go on a label, put it on Spotify, stream it. If you don't want to make money or get a lot of attention to it, do what you want. I'm not judging anything because this is creativity and other great music comes out of it. Even the whole culture comes from it. The hip hop culture is based on sampling, even house as well. So sampling is great and leads to great results and great music. But in terms of legal problems, I don't give any advice. <laughs> Definitely. Eh, le pregunté qué opinaba del sample porque el, el sample que él lo mencionó 
es, es como parte de una cultura. El house viene de ahí, sampleando el disco. El hip hop está basado en sampling. Entonces, lo que él me dijo, y muchos alumnos nuestros tuvieron como problemas por usar vocales o pedazos de canciones. Y en la distribuidora, esto se lo dije yo él, en la distribuidora, cuando lo mandaron antes de llegar a Spotify, les cuestionaron, les dijeron, ¿qué es este sample? ¿De dónde lo sacaste? Y les rebotaron música. Eh, y entonces le pregunté qué opinaba él y me dijo, es como entrar a un supermercado y agarrar una parte del sándwich y llevártela y construir un sándwich. Um, yeah. Do you know that I still don't have in a very clear position about that? Because at the end, yeah, it is a sample. Yes, it's your vocal, but... Uh, You know, it's part of the culture. It's like, it's like, like for, it's for me, it's contradictory. It is. Still. It's 50-50. It really, this is like, it's good that you have, we have the same or the different, maybe, uh, argument about it. But I think, yeah, oh, let's see it a different way. What is with the movies? And without clearing the sample, the music industry bigger industry is going down. I'm not saying that it's not good to sampling. I love sampling and I would definitely do. But when you do it, it's not, so, it's not so difficult sometimes to clear it. Just put the effort in, get the right people behind and make the clearing, which means at the end that a little percentage of the streaming or of the sales get to the person who created the sample, which is actually right. Because think about you, if you would be a, be a musician, making a lot of great music and then another guy makes also amazing awesome music which is more successful than your own music uh, you want something from it or you don't be honest yeah yeah definitely uh, as a matter of fact eh, bueno es lo que dice es si lo usas clarificalo o sea clear it is like to make a legal process to to say that lo que dice es, eh, clarificarlo. una pequeña porción de lo que vos vendas va a ir para el artista que lo creó. Eh, que a veces puede pasar que un sample que vos hiciste lo use un artista que tenga más éxito que vos y que gane más dinero que vos haciéndolo. Y es injusto que vos que fuiste el que creaste esa melodía, esa pequeña porción, ese vocal o que invertiste para producirlo, no recibas nada. Um, I don't know uh, from the last uh, Daft Punk Records, I don't know which artist said that they sampled me. Uh, uh, it was not a sample. Uh, they, I don't know what they used, but they changed my life, you know, because exactly. they brought me again to, 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 to yeah. the spotlight, yeah. And, well, yeah, it's a contradiction, but to, but to clear it and to be honest with that, I think is, is, is the fair yeah. thing. Yeah, exactly. And uh, in the last days, Uh, I used to work for Beatport on the very early days and all the electronic music was in Beatport and uh, to promote your music you go through SoundCloud. And nowadays Spotify is taking a really relevant uh, spot in electronic uh, house, uh, techno and everything. What, uh, how do you use that? That, uh, that do you use uh, Spotify as a social network or do you make uh, an effort to be there or for you is uh, not interesting yet? It is, it is interesting, but it's not that I make a huge effort on it because most of the tracks are too long for Spotify to become in the Spotify algorithm really played. You have to make Spotify edits, which could be not longer than two minutes and 46 minutes and play a house track in two minutes and 46 seconds doesn't really make proper sense. So, but I think in future, um, it's like every five or seven years, there's a new internet medium coming. We started with MySpace, then we had SoundCloud, now we have Spotify, in future, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Spotify. So there's a lot of, and there will be a definitely a new way of consuming music after Spotify. It's just the beginning, but let's talk about in seven years or ten years, there will be something new as well. So I think it's just a constant evolving. And then on the other hand, you have so much old school. You, the vinyl market goes so much up again because people who are into electronic music love buying vinyls. 
and consume it uh, in a in a completely different way. Definitely. Le pregunté, Spotify está creciendo mucho en el mercado de la música electrónica y le pregunté si él hacía algún tipo de esfuerzo porque Spotify se está convirtiendo como una red social a la que hay que alimentar. Entonces lo que me dijo es que los tracks son muy largos y él no se esfuerza demasiado, los tracks son muy largos para el algoritmo y que tendría que hacer Spotify edits y que él no le encuentra sentido eh, y que a través de los años han pasado... Spotify, MySpace, eh, perdón, eh, MySpace eh, Facebook y los, las distintas redes sociales que fueron creciendo. Así que sabe que en breve va a aparecer otra y que hay como un gran crecimiento del mercado del vinilo que también crece y que quizás es como una forma... Vinyl is a, a way to promote our music more, but... Uh, When you said Spotify edits, it was like in the past a radio edit to make like exactly. a house track yeah. uh, playable radio. In, a, in a radio. And sometimes I have the feeling that the people that come to dance my music is not really into the vinyl thing or to listen to beatport stuff, you know. It's like the end consumer, people that will, uh, will go to your party in, in the boat tomorrow, maybe doesn't know what Bitport is, exactly. you know? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, how, how do you reach that people with your music? Or what advice uh, will you give someone that is starting? Yeah, the most important thing is going clubbing, go out, go to the dance floors, listen to the DJs. I think this is the most important thing. Don't watch too much uh, streaming stuff. Just go to the club, experience and feel the music, feel the bass, get drunk, high, whatever you want to do, but feel the music. And I think this is the most important thing. Experience it. And then you decide by yourself which kind of sounds you like the most. Definitely. Uh, that uh, I, I hooked that, what, what you said before about uh, that the music you make is for the club yeah. and to make the people dance. Yeah. Uh, the, the end objective of your music is to be moving the energy of, yes. a, of a party. Exactly. Eh, me dijo que hay que ir al club, escuchar la música en el club, porque lo que había hecho antes, yo le dije que lo enlacé con lo que él había hecho antes, de que la música que él hace está creada para ser bailada en un club. Entonces dijo, anda a un club, emborrachate, viví la música, sentíla y, y es, es la esencia de, de lo que hacemos. And uh, speaking about technical stuff, uh, What do you use to produce nowadays? Your, I, I want to know about your, your small traveling okay. studio. <laughs> the small traveling studio, okay. It's like one laptop, like a um, MacBook Pro, but an old one from um, 2017. Uh, two hard drives, uh, one keyboard, but I don't bring it all the time, only if I stay away for longer. Uh -huh. It's like a super small one. and. Um, with Ableton, with Ableton, Logic, and Pro Tools, everything is on the laptop. So, and then, like I said, I start with an idea and build everything around it. And then, when I'm going to the studio, I see with which sound or which instrument, like draw a drum machine, would fit better or make this song better, instead of just changing it. If there's nothing to change, I just keep it. And uh, the, do you have plugins there? Also, do you use uh, VST or use Ableton stuff? No, 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 no. I use uh, third party, like a okay. lot of, yeah, o mostly only. Not the only instrument from Ableton I use is the drum rack and, okay. and the simpler. The, the best ones. I'm uh, not sure about that, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the most that I like. Well, I, I, I like the analog, the wavetable, the operator also. I like all them all. <laughs> Eh, bueno, le pregunté cómo era su, su estudio de viaje. Me dijo que tiene una laptop con dos eh, discos rígidos externos y un controlador MIDI que solo lleva cuando viaja por mucho tiempo con Ableton, Logic y Pro Tools. Y que usa el drum rack y después cuando va el drum rack y el simpler y que después cuando va al estudio busca a ver si necesita agregarle alguna máquina o algo para que, que encaje y si no... Eh, lo deja así como está, lo mezcla y sale. 
But uh, and you have headphones and yeah, head which my ones? My Sennheiser, like a DJ, but oh, right. the yeah. H twenty five, H D twenty five. And can you make music with that? Yes, quite good. <laughs> eh, y los auriculares que usa y que le van bastante bien son los HD25 de Sennheiser, que son los mismos que usa para tocar. Yeah, perfect, man. Yeah. It, it you know why they're so good? Because if you listen to like a lot of music every day with them and you're teaching with it, you know what you have to look when you're making the production and you you definitely know which sound needs to be where even if they're not really good for studio purposes but if you, and this is like for every monitor i would say if you get used to one speaker in even if this the baddest one but you know exactly where to put the sounds on that speaker it's better than every high end speaker in the world definitely i agree um me dice, pero ¿sabes por qué los H25? Porque son populares por no ser muy buenos para producir, son eh, auriculares más de DJ. Pero dice, como lo usás todos los días para escuchar música, vos ya sabés qué es lo que querés. Y entonces dice, y lo mismo aplico para los monitores. Es como que le terminás encontrando el sonido, ahí te acostumbrás y es más quizás eh, entender lo que tenés a intentar comprarte la máxima calidad es conocer lo tuyo. We keep on the path of less is more. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes less is more. I think when you when you make music for a certain amount of time, you uh, obviously in the beginning a new instrument is like leading to a new creativity. Same with the plugins. But if you doing it for a longer, longer period, um, you go back to what you really like and what sound you really like. And then y this is like what I mean with finding your sound. And then you can use less, but you can make much more music with, uh, with it. Because you always use more or less the same tools, yeah. Dice, cuando llevas tanto tiempo haciendo música, siempre volvés a lo que te gusta y podés hacer mucho más con muchísimo menos. Um, yeah, and uh, with the, when you start producing and you have ears doing music, and more when you make uh, different styles of music, um you learn how to make space in music you know it's not filling with a lot of stuff also to leave space between uh, between elements that mm, that's cool exactly and this is when you start djing more and more often in different clubs in the world or even in the city then you, you see like which tracks work on which sound systems and what um, it's important to keep the people dancing in certain clubs and this is sometimes when you go to a place and you think oh tonight I play this track, this track, this track and then you feel, hear the sound system and say ah, it doesn't work because it has too much bass for this sound system and people don't really feel it on the dance floor anymore then you have to change your set immediately or even not the set but picking the right songs which work better on that system and it's the same with producing music Definitely agree. Wh when you know the place and the sound system, it's easier to predict what is going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Dice, lo mismo pasa con los clubs. Cuando uno empieza a tocar en diferentes clubs, apenas escuchas el sistema de sonido, sabes qué es lo que va a funcionar ahí, si tiene que tener más espacio, tiene que estar más lleno. Eh, conocer, el so es conocer el sonido de los lugares. Y lo que yo le dije es, Cuanto más conoces el sonido del lugar, más fácil es predecir lo que lo que va a suceder esa noche. And how do you like uh, the bow? You've been there for uh, how many times? Three, three four, three. three. That's the fourth, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, two times in t inside and two times outside. Ah, outside is yeah. beautiful. Outside is beautiful. Yes, it's a different vibe. Exactly, it's like summer, close to the water, but inside is a it's a great club feeling. I like it a lot. So. It's a it's a big venue with a, a lot of good energy. Definitely, uh, the, uh, it's historical. I I used to go dancing there when I was a kid. Oh, right. the, yeah, yeah. It was not the bow, and the disposition of the of the booth was different. Okay. But uh, I, I it was one of my first clubs going clubbing, mm -hmm. and then I became like resident with another name. And it's what you said. It's big, but it's still having, you know, like that yeah. club feeling. Yes. 
Eh, le pregunté cómo, cómo, cuántas veces había tocado en, en The Bow. Tocó dos veces adentro y dos veces afuera. Eh, le dije, afuera es divino. Me dijo, sí, del clima, el río, estar ahí, la vibra. Y, y hablamos de... Yo le dije, es un club eterno. Yo iba ahí cuando era chico al cielo. Y, y siempre tuvo esa cuestión de ser como un club muy, un club muy grande pero que al mismo tiempo tiene una vibra así como íntima y de, de no sé cómo expresarlo, pero de club. Y and how, how do you plan an act, an act like for tomorrow? Do, do you have any plan or any road or is like you go and and feel? Most of it I definitely go by feeling, but obviously yes, I have a couple of tracks that definitely want to play. <laughs> And the rest, um, I and I know what kind of music works and what I want to want to play to the crowd. So, but I have not prepared a particular set. Like uh, I played this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and that. So, One, once uh, I was here with Guti, and he said, uh, talking about Loco Dice that you release on his label Desolate, and he said Loco Dice always talk about three tracks: the first one, the one in the middle, and and the end. Those are like the wow tracks, and then he he said, and they are always desolate tracks. <laughs> <laughs> Le pregunté cómo se preparaba para la noche, si tenía algo ya prearmado, cómo venía, y dijo que se maneja por el sentimiento, que hay algunos tracks que ya sabe que que va a tocar y que conoce a la pista y que sabe lo que explota, pero que sí que el resto se va se va manejando. I will ask if someone wants to make a question of and course, then yeah. I will keep uh, making questions and then they have to go to study. Yeah. ¿Alguno tiene alguna pregunta? ¿Qué quiere hacer? Dun, 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 dun. The, the first time that I may uh, I ask if someone will have a question, they never ask and then they start asking. <laughs> Puedo seguir yo si quieren, ¿eh? ¿Qué decime? ¿Vos querías hacer algo o estás, no? I will keep asking. Do you want to say something that you you feel? Don't be shy. <laughs> eh? Don't be shy. No, no. Do you want to say something that, that maybe I don't think it, but you want to talk about something? In particular, right now, like in particular, yeah. something else. <laughs> I asked this to Fabian Florido, and he said he started talking about meditation, being in focus. Uh, and ego, for example. <laughs> ego? Yeah. Okay. Well. I, I asked him uh, what did he learn about Richie uh, to share with the... Yeah. There was full of Richie fans. And he said, Richie has no ego. Oh, that's a cool thing. And then I went to Cordoba with Richie and I asked... I told this story to Richie and he said, Fabio has no ego. <laughs> you know? okay. So they love each other. That's good. Okay. Uh, we talk about. The, I I I know something that I want to talk uh, with you. Bueno, les I will translate the history. Le pregunté si él quería agregar algo. Cuando Fabio Florido vino acá, le pregunté. Muchos de ustedes estaban. Le dije qué aprendiste de Richie. Y él dijo Richie Hotting no tiene ego. Y me fui a Córdoba con Richie y le dije, le conté toda esta historia y él me dijo Fabio no tiene ego. Y es como bueno. Eh, una historia bastante copada de dos personas que se quieren. I will ask you the last one. Okay. Uh, I was here with a friend of you, with Sydney, and he talked uh, incredible things about you. And he said that for him it's very important to have like a crew, to have like a couple of friends, you know, uh, to support each other. He said, I finish a track and I send it to Sante and he mentioned uh, another couple of, of artists and uh, as a piece of advice to future producers, how important is for you, your your gang, your group of friends? Uh, it, is it is definitely important, Re um, but I think what is also super important is have somebody if you're becoming less uh, professional that you have friends outside of the business and be uh, really really patient don't push it too quick and i think this is the um, advice i learned over the years a lot be patient and try again if you fail again and then again and again and again but 
if you do it long enough, it will work out really well. Amazing, man. I love that as an ending. Eh, le dije que un día vino Sidney Charles acá y habló de él, habló de todo el grupete que, que es como un círculo de confianza donde terminan un track y se lo comparte con uno con otro, reciben feedback y ese feedback es sincero, entonces como que se hacen crecer entre ellos y le pregunté si, qué, qué tanta importancia le daba él a, a ese grupo y él me dijo que es importante, pero que también es importante tener amigos fuera de la industria de la música y que como consejo para todos ustedes, lo que les recomienda es tener mucha paciencia. Que, las que si fallan, vuelvan a intentarlo. Porque si ustedes le dedican mucho tiempo a esto, en algún momento los resultados llegan. Así que voy a pedirles un fuerte aplauso para este genio Gracias, que vino acá. Gracias, Gracias por venir. Y bueno, si quieren sacarse una foto, quedarse o algo. ¿Querés hacer la foto grupal? Siempre hacemos una foto grupal y si ustedes quieren hacerla, voy a primero regalar, I will give you a gift from our friends from Luxo. This is a t-shirt. Nice As I told you in Muchas the office, gracias. this t-shirt is like, it has a, like a, a history from a rave. So every rave in the history has a different t-shirt. This one is super cool, I love it. And nice. <laughs> cool. Uh, y después, si todos quieren ponerse de frente al fotógrafo con él acá y sacamos una foto grupal, después la publicamos en Instagram y se hacen super famosos. <laughs> que es muy poco importante. Chicos, gracias a todos por venir. Muchas y gracias, chicos. ¿eh? Y gracias, gracias, Santé, por estar acá.